All right, guys. Welcome back to another episode here from the Off Grid Garage in Sunny Hot. You name it. Well, today with a video from the Tesla and from my Tesla Model 3 here, we are on our way to the Victron installer north of Brisbane. I have already driven 106 kilometers now, so we've got another 6.6 kilometers ahead of us. I have printed out all the diagrams I have from the house, wiring, my solar stuff, um, the contract for our feed-in tariff. Yeah, I think I've got all the documentation together. So I'm very keen to see what the installer says, what idea they come up with. Guys, this is the day. Let's go. This is probably what we need to upgrade the garage soon. 150, 70 amps. <sighs> Stupid thing. All right, guys, I am back after 40 minutes. 40 minutes, good chat with um, Eddie, the director here of Springer's Solar in... Where are we? Is this still Brisbane here? I think it is. Well, to summarize that, it doesn't look good. Because of the contract, I'm not allowed to install any other inverter, which is in any form somehow connected to the grid even not if it has a transfer switch. The Energex, which is the energy supplier here, not my retailer, the Energex distributor, they don't allow to have any further, any further inverter connected to the system which has the feed-in system installed. Very quickly, this is what I have. This is my house load. This is my grid-connected solar. If I put another inverter in here, which is then connected via a transfer switch to the grid, I am not allowed to do that. It would mean I'm increasing my inverter size from 5 kilowatt here from my AC coupled solar system with another whatever I put in, 3, 5, 8, 10, 15 kilowatt inverter. Even there is a transfer switch and I'm disconnecting from the grid during the night. It's not allowed. They are not. This is not allowed. This is against the contract. I'm increasing my inverter's size. This is just a rule. This is just a rule they make. He had several customers who wanted to do the same. And it's very, very tricky to do that. As soon as I put another inverter in there, as long as it's an off-grid inverter like the one I have in the garage in our switchboard, totally fine. It's not connected to the grid at all. It's totally independent. So I can, I can go off-grid nuts inside the garage without getting in trouble. There is no problem at all. But I cannot feed any power from the garage to the house. I'm not allowed to do that. I would lose the tariff straight away. And he told me they have a team sitting there with Energex who are monitoring these things. They're looking at histories of houses and if the export is peaking, it flags them, it flags this with them. They're coming out, they are looking, what are you doing? Why is the export more than the last five, eight years? What has changed? If you then have another inverter connected to the grid, which you only use during the night, with a transfer switch, you're in trouble. This is considered an increase in inverter size and it's totally not allowed if you want to stay in this contract. What I'm allowed to do though is, what he said, I can move load from the house to the off-grid system, in theory. This would increase my export as well from the house. They would eventually come out and would check that, would say, well, we have an increased export 
energy measurement now from your premise what is going on so i could i could take half of the house and put this on the garage load there are all the power points uh the fridge the freezer everything would run from the off-grid system then i could do that because there's no connection to the public grid they allow that they would come out eventually because I'm ex I'm exporting more and more, but they can't do anything because I'm allowed to have as many solar battery systems on my property as long as they are not connected to the grid. I can have the pool pump running on solar individually, not connected to the grid. I can do that. He told me um, there is a load sharing system available for solar if your batteries are full it um, fires up your hot water system dumps the energy instead of the solar charge controllers turning off and and um, stopping charging our batteries they would flip over to charge up your hot water system then but i cannot connect anything to the same cables to the same circuits as the feed-in solar on my house the only other thing i could do is having the electric vehicle charger on the off-grid system having the pool pump on the off-grid system having the hot water system on the off-grid system because this is a separate circuit and i just disconnect the circuit and connect this all to the batteries so there's no way i can use a hybrid inverter or something nothing like this it's just not allowed even not with a transfer switch and this is what I was not 100% clear. It doesn't say in the contract, but he's got customers who have tried that and Energex said, no, nah, that's a no go. There's always a possibility that the customer will later on just put a little wiring bridge inside the inverter and then it connects to both the battery and the grid at the same time as your solar feed in and you're feeding more power into the grid. And he told me as well, people have fucking abused the system, you know, and this is why they have amended it for years and years and years to, to cover up all these loopholes people found, to inject more energy into the grid to get more money. It's all about the money they are making. It's not about doing the right thing, it's about the fucking money. That's all. So yeah, guys, that's how we, that's where we are with. All right, um, let me let me um, think about it. I've got another appointment yet in Brisbane here with a car. Um, this will be on the other channel then. I'll think about it. And this needs to settle at the moment and I need to think about options because I know the premise, I know where the cables roughly are. I know what we could potentially do to make it work somehow. Yeah, let's leave it like this and um, drive home again. It is, it is disappointing, but it is not as bad as I was thinking because I thought maybe he says something that, well, in your case, this is not possible at all. Due to the contract, due to what you have installed, this is not possible at all. But now there are options. There are options to do it if it's worth doing it for eight years, seven years until 1st of July, 2028. Is he going to park in here or is he now he's pulling in there? All right. So yeah, well, no, he's doing, he's still coming in here. So it is an option. There are options, but if they are good, if they are doable, I don't know. I'll, I'll think about it and talk to you soon again. Hey guys, welcome back to the off-grid garage. It is the next day uh, from when we came back from the installer in Brisbane yesterday. And I wanted to film something to share my thoughts about this whole situation now yesterday. But I thought, well, just give it a night, have a sleep, have a snooze, and then continue the video tomorrow, which is today. Yeah, well, um, I thought about all these what we have discussed with the installer yesterday and from what i can see 
we have not many options. The problem is the contract, which is made by Energex, which is the power distribution company, which is state owned. So they made this law, this contract, and amended it several times until 2018. Because people always found loopholes in the system and abused it. And that's why they had to amend it all the time. Yeah, people ran generators for days, even during the night, because it was not forbidden. And exported energy. The money they got back from Energex for that, the 44 cents per kilowatt hour, was far more than they had to pay for fuel. Others installed batteries, charged them up during the day, exported the energy during the night. Then others again installed huge, huge, huge solar panels, kept the inverter size the same, and from the morning when the sun came up, they started exporting five kilowatt per phase, continuously until the sun went down because the solar array was so large. And all this maximized their income. So there were amendment after amendment to this law every single year, basically, since it came out in 2012. And now it is so tight that they are not accepting any changes any variations, any modifications to existing systems. So, okay, let's, let's categorize that. What are we allowed to do? As I, when I talked to the installer yesterday, he told me he has many, many customers in the same situation. They all have the high feed in tariff of 44 cents per kilowatt hour plus additional payments from their retailers, from the power company you are with. So people are getting up to 70 cents per kilowatt hour still here in Queensland. And they're all trying to maximize their income to minimize what they are actually importing during the night with batteries, with more solar, more inverters, whatever. So again, what is allowed? This, what we are doing here in the off-grid garage, having a battery sitting here, having an inverter, having solar charge controller, solar panels on the roof here, being completely off the grid, totally fine, totally legal. There is no problem with Energex. There is no, nothing interfering with my contract, nothing. 100% legal. I can install solar panels as many as I want. I can have battery size as many as I want. I can install inverters here in the off-grid garage as many as I like, as long as nothing is connected to the grid. Nothing is connected to the grid. This includes also transfer switches. A transfer switch is considered a grid connection. It doesn't say this in the contract, but this is how Energex enforces this law. So as long as we stay off-grid here in the off-grid garage, the name implies it, we are totally fine. We can install another 15 kilowatt inverter here, no problem at all, off-grid, no connection to the grid. I am allowed to charge the batteries from the grid, though. This can be the only connection allowed. So I can install a big charger here, if I run out of battery power, I can turn on the charger and charge the batteries from the grid. This is a grid, this is not considered a grid connection. I am also allowed, which I wasn't aware, reading the contract, reading the law, I thought this is not allowed, but it is allowed. I could separate circuits in my house and pull a cable from there here to the off-grid garage and connect this to our off-grid system. So I could rewire my house inside and having all the circuits, all the power outlets in the house running from the off-grid. Leave the oven, the stove, the aircon on the normal grid. Allowed. This would also maximize, this would also increase my feed in income, but it is allowed. Here it says, Customers can also install additional generation systems on separate circuits in their homes or business. So as I told you yesterday, one of his customers has done this. He has separated everything and left only the solar 
which feeds into the grid on the grid. Everything else is running off grid. And Energix came and checked, but totally legal. So this is pretty much everything which is allowed. There's not much. This doesn't give us much room. Okay, the other thing which is not allowed. I cannot install a hybrid inverter or any other inverter if it is connected to the grid in any form. A transfer switch not allowed. They would not accept this because people have, they have used little cable bridges and just bypass the transfer switch and run their batteries in parallel. They are not accepting a transfer switch anymore because people are f stupid. And I explained this yesterday already. As soon as I add a hybrid inverter to my additional inverter and this hybrid inverter is in any form connected to the grid, it is considered an upgrade of inverter size. I've got five kilowatt here, another five here as a hybrid even if this one runs only during the night. And it says this here in the contract. It says adding batteries or other energy storage. Yeah. A customer may install a battery or energy storage as long as the energy stored in the battery is only ever discharged at night. That is when the eligible solar PV system is not generating. Yeah, makes sense. This is what I always told you. And it also says customers will lose eligibility if they install a battery or energy storage on the same electrical installation as their eligible solar PV system and, and the battery or storage is installed in a way that allows it to supply electricity at the same time as the eligible PV system. It allows it at the same time. Well, a transfer switch would not allow that, right? But as I said, stupid people have abused this and had little wiring bridges across the transfer switch and used the battery at the same time as their solar. And Energex found out and guess what? Amendment of the law. Yeah, close the loophole. So this is basically what is allowed and what is not allowed. I cannot connect anything anything else to the grid apart from a charger to charge the batteries. Okay, so we talked also about solutions yesterday, not only about what is allowed and what not. We talked about solutions. Guys, guys, I'm just editing this video here from yesterday from the installer visit in Brisbane. And I think it, it, we are at 18 minutes already and I've got another 22 minutes already edited for this. This will be like a 40, like a 40 minute video. Unbearable, right? So I'm cutting off here. This is part one. Then watch part two if you are still interested in this whole story and what solutions we have to go forward here in the off-grid garage. Okay, back to editing. See you, um, see you then, bye.